All right. So, hi everyone. Getting ready to start. Just uh, confirm again for me the audio is clear and we are on our way. All right, good. Excellent. So, in the previous session a while back, we talked about trends. Now we are going to talk about trend lines, speed lines, and channels. So let's go. So trend lines. An uptrend line is a straight line drawn upwards to the right along successive reaction lows. That's bottoms or troughs, as we saw before. A downtrend line is drawn downwards again to the right, joining successive rally peaks or tops. So let's look at them a bit visually now. So what do we have here? We have a nice uptrend, la 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 la, everyone is happy, everyone is making money. So how do we draw an uptrend line, we say? Well, we join the bottoms. So in an uptrend, we join the bottoms. And in a downtrend, so how is a downtrend here? We see lower tops and lower bottoms. So in a downtrend, we join the tops. So now I have my uptrend line when the market is going up, and we have a downtrend line when the market is going down. So uh, we are repeating this here again because I want you to see that two troughs denote a tentative. So when you only have two bottoms and you join only two bottoms, it's called a tentative uptrend line. To have a valid trend line, you need three or more troughs to denote a valid trend line. And of course, the more the better. So you see, this one is a valid trend line, uptrend line, because it's being touched by one, two, three bottoms. And this is what makes this a valid uptrend line. Now the downtrend line again, we said is a straight line drawn by joining successively lower tops. Two peaks would create a tentative downtrend line, and three or more peaks denote a valid downtrend line. So here, this is a valid downtrend line because it has one, two, three tops that we join to create the trend line. So this is how we create our trend lines. So two points create a tentative, three or more create a valid one. The longer the, it has been intact and the more number of times it has been tested, it makes a line more important. The more important the trend line, the more significant and the more confidence it inspires when it's penetrated, when it's broken. What do we mean by this? So we have a trend and the uptrend line acts as a support area where traders use it as a buying to continue with the trend. In a downtrend line, corrections come very close or touch the downtrend line, giving areas where you can go short to follow the trend. It's like the retracements we saw before. Now, breaking of a trend line is one pay attention to this, of the best early warnings of a change in trend. So the significance of a trend line comes from the fact of how long has it been intact. The longer it has been intact, the more significant. The more times it has been tested, the more significant, yeah? And the more significant a trend line is, 
the more confident the traders feel and the more important is its penetration. So look at this now. Here we have a nice uptrend, higher tops, higher bottoms, as we saw in the previous webinar. We draw our uptrend line. It's a good one because it's been tested one, two, three, four times. So it's been going on for a while. So it's a significant trend line. And then look at this, what happens here? We break the trend line here. Yeah. So here, the trend line was penetrated. This is a significant thing warning us that this uptrend is not as good as it was before. Remember, it's an early warning signal that this uptrend could be changing. In the case of a downtrend, of course, we have our lower tops and lower bottoms. We draw our trend line connecting one, two, three, four points. So it's a good one, this is a valid one, okay? And then if this line is broken, like it happens here, then it's a significant signal that the downtrend is weakening or changing. Now pay attention to this again. A close beyond the trend line is more significant than just an intraday penetration. So for example, you need, if the math price closes here, it's more important than just going below it for a while and then closing above it. Usually, traders use filters in order to make sure that the trend line was penetrated because it's not an exact science is not brain surgery yes so we say a price filter could be the three percent penetration criteria what does a three percent penetration uh, filter mean it means that if the trend line here is 100 then to say that the trend line was broken the price has to come down at least three percent let's say to 97 or more and then we say that this is a valid breaking of a trend line. The same applies here. If this level is 100, then we say above 103, it means that it was clearly broken. However, the percentage filter is a bit uh, arbitrary because 3% uh, on a daily chart might be okay, but 3% on a five minute chart is not that good. It's too big for a five minute chart. So instead I prefer to use a time filter. A common time filter is the two period rule. That means that I would like to see one, two closes below the level here before I say that it has been broken. So for example, if I come here, I see I have a nice, downtrend yeah so what I would do is I could take this here trend line and I could draw a trend line yes and you see it's touching this one and this one making it a tentative one but if I were to join these levels here yes you see that it's been tested once, it's been tested twice. So here it's been tested again. And then when it breaks the level here with one close or two closes is an important warning signal that this downtrend that is going on for a while is not as good as it was before. So here we had, let's say, a very good warning that this downtrend is not that good anymore. And the market went all the way up there before continuing lower. So now we can create another trend line by joining T21. But remember, since this trend line has only been tested one, two points, it's not a valid trend line. It's a tentative trend line. What we would like to see is for this trend line to be tested one more time at least, 
and then continue going down to say that this is a valid and strong trend line so its penetration would be significant. So this is how we can use the trend lines to help us with the trends. So if we were to go here, yes, again, we have a 10 tariff trend line. If I join B7 with B8, okay, and here when it was broken and I had two closes below, was a warning signal that this uptrend is not as good as it was before and we had a very nice drop. So this is in a nutshell how we use trend lines to help us see what is happening with the trends. So the 3% rule, yeah, for short term, hourly charts, let's say, you can use the 1% rule or the problem is that if the filter is too small, then it will not serve the purpose of reducing the whipsaws. If the filter is too big, then much of the initial move will be missed. Yes? So the two-day rule is preferable to use across all time frames, makes it less hassle. So basically you need for two days if you are on a daily chart or you want to wait for two five-minute candles if you are on the five mini chart. So these are some filters that you should be using to help you make sure that the trend line was broken. Now let's see what this is. Adjustment of trend lines. What could this be? So breaking of a steeper trend line suggests drawing a slower up trend line which may be proved more sustainable. What does that mean? Look at this. You see, the first time the market is going up, yeah, and it breaks here, it penetrates our valid trend line because it's been tested one, two, three times. Now, once it comes down, what happens? It starts going up again, yes? But the slope, the speed of the trend is lower. So here the market was going up very big moves, aggressively fast. Here it's still going up, but at a slower pace. So a flat uptrend line may be too slow. So a steeper line is redrawn to close and track the prices in the opposite case. So here at the beginning, the market is going slowly. You see, I have my valid uptrend line, but then the price accelerates going faster up. That means that I need to adjust my trend line and draw a new trend line, connecting the most recent bottoms in order to have a more correct trend line that is following the market more closely. So this is how we adjust the trend lines. And there is another thing that is called an internal trend line, which runs through the price action, connecting as many peaks and troughs as possible. They do not rely on the low and the high like the normal trend lines, but the problem, the big problem with these trend lines is that they are very, very subjective so anyone can draw anything they want and they say i have a nice trend line and now uh, this is related to what we talked about before about time frames you know we have the big the main time frame the main movement we have the secondary or intermediate movement and we have the minor or short term movement now if we look at a chart, let's say this is a daily chart, we can draw all these time frames, all these trend lines on one chart. So we will take the big bottoms here, 
and we draw our major trend line, but with above this line, the market can be going fast, then breaking it and slowing down, then going up again, breaking it and slowing down, then going up again, which gives us the intermediate trend lines. And if it accelerates even faster, then we would have our shorter, short and term trend lines. Now, before we go and talk about channel lines, I would like to ask you if you have any questions about what we covered up to now regarding trend lines. So, you in a in a downtrend, you would join the tops, yes, and in an uptrend move, you would join. Let's find an uptrend somewhere here. So, if I were to go now to the weekly time frame of the euro, what do I have here? I could draw a trend line. Let's say I can connect this here, B2. Sorry, I can connect B4 also, not that clearly, but I can clearly connect B3 with B2, right? So I'm connecting the bottoms. And then what do I do? I look for a break. You see, here it touched the line, but it didn't break it. And then the market is moving, the market is moving. Now what you can do with trend lines is you can come here and you can make it draw us a ray. So even though you will only join this bottom with this bottom, it will continue going up into the future. And what is happening here? It's still finding support there. Oh, and then I have one, two closes below the trend line. And you could even say that's a close, but the clear closes in this and this, yeah? So this is a serious warning signal that this uptrend is not as strong as it was before, and hence the correction continues much lower. Yes, you can use the two-day rule, Julius, on a daily, or if it's a, an hourly chart, the two rules would mean to wait for two closes above or below the line, right? So, for example, in this uh, move up here, you would join B3 and B2. It found support on the line, and then we have one close, two closes below the line, means that this up move is not that good anymore and we are going down. Trend line using your Android phone, I don't know when we trade, when we analyze the market, it's better to use a desktop because it has more tools and it's clearer what our analysis is, yeah? Okay, very good. So this is uh, how we can use trend lines, identify the different kind of trend line on a real chart. This is a real chart, Frank. I don't know what else you mean by a real chart. But just for you, I will do it again. So the market is going up and I'm joining the bottoms of B3 with B2, it extends into the future, and here I have one, two closes below the line, meaning that this up move is now not as good as it was before, yeah? So, Tebogo, breaking the trend line, what does it mean? You see here, the market stopped on the line. Do you see this point here? So, let me show it to you. So, 
here the market didn't break the trend line, right? So I'm saying, okay, good, it didn't break the trend line and it continues up. Here, we had as an intraday penetration of the line, yes? So we say, okay, but it didn't really break. Then what happens? Here, we have one candle closing below the level. Here, we have a second candle closing below the level. So we say that below this level here, which is around 121, something is happening in this uptrend. It's not that good anymore. If I bought down here or here for whatever reason or the correction here, then maybe I should get out and wait to, for the market to clear again. Yes, this is Euro USD weekly and yes, Nell, we use the trend line weeks to draw the trend line. We use the weeks. Yes, but remember, drawing trend lines is not that exact. Yes. So now I will go and show you a better way to draw trend lines because one of the problem of trend lines is that they are subjective. Yes, you know what subjective means? It means that especially if you don't have an indicator finding for you the tops and the bottoms, you can draw anything you like, yes? So I could join this with this with this. Okay, so you see, this is a downtrend line and it's a valid one and so on. But someone else might say, no, this is the trend line. <laughs> someone else might say, no, this is the correct trend line, yes? Okay, and when it was broken here, uh, it means that this down was ending and so on. Okay, so let's continue with what we call channel lines. Now, when we have an uptrend and we have an uptrend line or we have a downtrend, and we have a downtrend. What we can do here is we can draw a parallel line to this uptrend line, and we call it a return line, and we thus create a channel, right? And this channel, we expect the prices to move inside the channel. When they touch the return line, to come down, to touch the uptrend line, and then go up, touch the return line, come down, attach the uptrend line until this breaks. And the same for a downtrend. So this is the normal downtrend line. And I take a parallel of this line. I draw it here. And I have created a downwards trending channel. And I expect that prices will stop on the downtrend line, find support on the return and continue flowing, continue moving inside this channel until it breaks. The same rules that we used before can apply. So the prices trend between the two parallel lines, which is the basic trend line, uptrend or downtrend, and the channel line or the return line. So here we have our basic trend line, which is the uptrend line in this case, and this is the channel or return line, and we expect the prices to move inside this channel. So uptrend channel, we need a basic trend line. The more important, the more reliable the channel line will be. So we connect the troughs here in our example, one, three, and we can create our basic trend line. Then we create a parallel line of this and we put it along the tops, as many tops as we can, yeah? So we draw it from the peak two, we take this parallel and we put it there and we create a channel and you see that on four it found resistance came down from support found resistance we expect it to find support and continue inside this channel this is how 
you draw an upward trending channel and for a downward trending channel what do you need you need the basic trend line which is the downtrend line so you connect peaks one and three and you extend it into the future and then you have you make a parallel of this line put it here on the bottom two and this is your channel line creating a channel over there so this is how you would draw a channel so in reality some people what do they do they use the basic trend line to initiate new positions and the channel line to take their profit yeah or some aggressive traders can even use it to create counter trend positions but remember we said we don't do that yes okay so so the breaking of a basic trend line like indicates a change in trade. The breaking of a channel up indicates an acceleration in the trend. The failure of the prices to reach the top channel increases the odds that the basic trend line may be broken. And once a breakout occurs, prices usually target a distance equal to the width of the channel so the channel line is a variation of the trend line techniques yes the longer the channel remains intact and the more often it is successfully tested the more important and reliable it becomes and here we have some examples so let's go and look at some examples now of how we could create a channel on the euro weekly so what did we say the first thing we need yeah is to join the bottoms right uh, let's do it more correctly i'm joining these guys here so when the market is here i what do i do just to understand it better so let me zoom in a little okay and the market is going up so here i have one bottom and i have another one remember the original trend line was joining these two levels here hmm? then it found support and went up and then remember we adjust the trend lines since the price accelerated and i join this bottom with this bottom now what i can do is i can take this line yes and i'll create a similar one by drawing one on top of this yeah exactly the same okay and then i will go and i will put it parallel to this since my first level was here i am going to put it at the first top i have which is that one there and thus i have created a nice channel so what do i expect the market to do now i expect the price is going to go and reach that level there but remember what did we say we said that if it fails to reach that level then it's a warning that this trend line is going to be broken yeah but in the end it was not broken and it continued here so while i was expecting it to reach that level it failed to do it and this time the line was broken and the channel was destroyed and the market went down So this is how we create a channel line to move the market inside this channel and accordingly buy and sell. So if we choose another instrument, what instrument shall we choose, guys? Tell me an instrument. Tell me an example. What shall I use? 
Oh, wow, that's an exotic one. GBP, oh, too many. Okay, so I'll go GBP yen, uh, Euro USD, we just show it. Let's have a look at the GBP. Whoops, that's not good. So let's go and have a look at GBP, JPY, because it did a very big move today and everyone is very excited about it. So look at this. If I start with the move that I have here, I can join these levels here. You see, I'm joining, let me do it more correct. I'm joining this level with this level. And I have created, and look how it found support here. But let's see how we do it before that happens so that you understand it better. So when the market is here, I can take my trend line and I will join this level with this level, right? And I have created my uptrend line. Now, if I want to create a parallel line of this, I will just come here. I will put one exactly on top. Okay, I've almost on top. All right, and then I will take this one I need to select one of the two. And it's not letting me move it. Let me do it again, guys, sorry. So I have my first line, and then I will go and I will join a par, I will create a parallel to this one, yeah? And then, ah, it's not letting me do it for some reason. Now I think I need to move a bit like this. Okay, but drawing a parallel of this one, I would join it like this, yes? So you see how this one is a parallel of this one. So, and I put it on my first top here. And I have created a channel now. And what do I expect the market to do now? I expect it to move inside this channel. So it's going up. OK, it tested the top of the channel. Very good. It's coming down. OK, it's flipping with it. Uh, it opened below, but it didn't close below. So it found support. Hmm, something is changing here. What is changing? Remember, we were expecting it to go and reach that level there. But instead, it didn't manage to go all the way to the top and it started coming down and it broke one close below the level. Okay, but not a second one yet let's wait okay so here i have a close below the level again so this is signaling that this uptrending channel we had on the sterling yen of course on the weekly time frame here we say that this channel is probably broken but remember we need to wait for the week to close to say that it's broken now, if we were to switch to a faster time frame, like the hourly here, what could we do on the hourly? So when the market was like this, I could say I could join this with this, but then when it was broken, this is my valid one. And I would create a parallel to this one. So I would draw it going through the bottom here and when it breaks the bottom one pay attention to this one the trend accelerates and we had a nice party on the sterling yen yeah. and if you go to an even lower time frame now you can create another trend line Remember, before I would join these areas here, now I'm going to join this with this. Yes? Okay? So here I have one close above. The second one is not a green candle, so I'll prepare to wait to see another green candle closing above the level, but it didn't, so now it's continuing with its direction down. Now, all these are nice, 
but I would like us to move a bit further down because as we said, all these lines are nice, but they are a bit subjective because anyone can draw anything he wants and create any channel he wants, and I don't like this. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you an objective way of identifying channels or which in essence is trend lines, and this is the linear regression. So an easy way to put channels is to use the linear regression channel. A linear regression is the line that fits all the data as best as it can. It's as close as possible to most of the data. This is what a linear regression line is, okay? So, and after what we do then, we take the linear regression and we add two standard deviations above it to create the upper channel line, and we subtract two standard deviations to create the bottom. Okay, so if I were to go back to our platform now, what do I have here? I would draw instead of let's go back to the example we are seeing before on the euro on the weekly instead of drawing all these channels with my hand and manually and moving them a bit to fit whatever i want them to do what we do is we come here this is the linear regression channel or you can come here insert channels linear regression and then i find the all-time low of my time and the all-time high which is this candle here and i have created a linear regression channel now this one in the middle we said is the linear regression line it's trying to be as close as possible to all the data okay and then we have the lower channel line, which is this minus two standard deviations, and the upper, which is this plus two standard deviations. And now we have an objective tool of how to create channels. So no need to move it a little there and there. And here, what do we have? We have one, two closes outside the channel, confirming that the channel was broken, telling us that this nice uptrend is no more so this is how you draw proper trend lines and channels using the linear regression not using the mind and its biases so let's see the rules of the linear regression and then we'll go see some examples so we draw always from left to right we draw from the all-time low to the all-time high in an uptrend and we draw from the all-time high to the all-time low in a doubt. Okay, so these are the simple rules to use to draw a linear regression. So in my example here, what did I do? This is the all-time low. This is the all-time high. So I take my channel and I put it on the candle that has the low and I take it to the candle that has the high. You don't have to put it there, it does the calculation on its own. Okay, found support here, found resistance here, and then here it didn't reach the top, and once it broke the channel, we had a nice party. And this is how we use the linear regression. Now, Let's have a Q&A, okay? And then we'll see some more examples to make it clear. So, let's go. ATL means all-time high. So, in the picture that I'm seeing here, in the last movement, the all-time high is this one, and the all-time low is this one, right? And since it's going up, I draw it from left to right, from the bottom to the top. 
<laughs> and now the question everyone is asking, which I will answer in general, yes? So can the linear regression be trusted on the 15 minutes? Look at this, guys. All tools work better on the higher time frames, and as you come to the lower time frames, their accuracy decreases. They are, of course, still accurate enough, but their accuracy decreases as you come down. Give me an example on the 15 minutes and we'll go and have a look at it. So what happens if the graph goes out from our assumed lines? I don't understand how the graph can go. You mean the prices. So if I draw my trend line from here to here, yes, the prices here are out. So if I bought somewhere in this trend, definitely, if not from here, from here, I close my position, take my profit, and wait for the next opportunity to trade the market. Kevin, you are asking about a subject that is not relevant to today, but we will cover what you are asking in tomorrow's webinars. So please join us tomorrow and uh, we'll be clearer, yes? Well, we use the channel because we want it to be objective, not subjective. So yes, we put it in a channel. As long as it's inside the channel and the channel is going up like my example here, we are very happy. Now, if the channel is broken, then it means that this uptrend is weakening. Is it best to use a trend line and linear regression in lower time frames such as the one hour? Gina, you are not listening to me. The higher the time frame, the more accurate anything you use is. Clear? Now, for example, if I was to use it on this movement here, from this low to this high, when the price was going up, then here I have one close, two closes below the level, three, four closes. So here was a warning signal that this up move is finished and I'm probably going down like we did. Now that I'm going down, what I would do is I would take my channel from the high to the low, right? And do you see what is happening now? I have created a nice downward channel, and as long as the price remains below the upper channel line, I'm expecting it will continue going lower. So remember, some people, what do they do when it moves there? Let me stop this from being a ray. We expect it will can find support here, go up, then find resistance, come down, then go up again, and continue moving down in this channel until some time it will break the channel. I will see one, two closes, in this case, two hourly candles above the level, in which case I will say that this channel is broken, so if I'm short, it's better to take profit, and so on. So, and these lines have any advantages in 100% profit circle? I don't understand the question, but if your question is if there is anything that is 100% accurate, then the answer is no but it doesn't have to be 100% accurate to make money. Yes, you are Danny, we said that if you have uh, an uptrend channel, so let's find an uptrend channel that we have here. What the, the channel is going up, it's testing the support, but here, you see, we were expecting it to reach the top of the channel here, right? It didn't, it failed to do that. So this is a warning signal, our first warning signal, that 
this uptrend is weakening, but it's better to wait until the trend line is penetrated, like so, to confirm. Well, Roy, we do not use a trend line adjustment anymore because I just showed you that the best thing to use is not to draw trend lines and put them wherever you want yourself, but to use a linear regression channel, which is objective. So you have your channel here and you can draw smaller channels as you go along. Yes, of course, you can use channels on the four hour time frame, you can use them on the one hour time frame, you can use them anywhere you want. So, for example, here on the four hour, what would I do? I would put it from the high to the low, and you see here I am in a downward moving channel and I'm expecting the market to continue moving lower. Why auto trading is click on the toolbar? Ah, that one there, that's another story. Auto trading is when you have an automated algorithm to take trades for you, but to Zara, that's when you grow older. What is the significance of the middle line? There is no significance. The middle line does not have any significance. It is just there used to calculate the upper and the lower. So, a very good example, again, to see is the dollar yen on the four hours. So, if I take it from the low to the high here, what do we have here? It was moving inside my channel and it broke my channel. So, this is definitely a negative signal. Now, how would I adjust the channel since Roy asked? Since I have a bottom here, if I want to have a faster channel, I could join this with this, yes? So, you see, you can adjust the line and you see that your exit was much closer to the top than using the unadjusted channel. No, it's not important to wait for a retest feature because the idea is that I have bought, yeah? So my idea is that if I bought somewhere here, and you will understand after we go through all the series, but let's say you bought somewhere for whatever reason, you are looking for an opportunity to exit. So here, when you have one, two closes outside the channel here, yes? You are not going to wait for a retest, even though it happened there, you would just take your profit and wait for the next opportunity to trade the market. Yes, so let me let me explain again how I would draw a trend line. So someone said before something about Euro yen. So let's put on the euro yen and let's take this part of the move so when i'm here what would i do where is my high this is my high where is my low this is my low so i take my channel from the high to the low okay and then what do i see here here i see one candle closing outside the level, the green one. The next one, however, is closing inside. So you see, this was not a valid break of the line. But then I have one green candle and two green candles closing outside the line. So this is an indication that the downtrend is broken. If I shorted for X, Y, Z reason, we are not gonna go through that now, here you could take your profit well you don't know if it's a fake breakout nile but what you do know is that when you see this you will take your profit and it's a good thing that you did because the market went all the way up there now 
So now that the move started going like this, what do you, you don't care about this trend line, downtrend line anymore, because the market is going up. So now you will find the low and take it to the high of that move, and now you have an upwards trending channel. All right? So in an upward trending channel, what do I care that it doesn't break the downtrend line? And here I expect to find support and go up, right? And it did. You see how it found support and went up? And still going up. And then I had one close below the level. And then I had a second close on a green candle, but quite far away from there. If you want to wait for another one, you have one, two, three closes outside this channel, which in reality means that, again, this uptrend move is probably finished. If you bought when the previous channel was broken, you better take your profit. And it's a good thing you did because then the market continued down. But how you are going to draw trend lines for the future as you are making channels on the past? Okay, as you see, this channel that I am drawing, yes, is extended into the future. So I take it from there to there and it extends it into the future. So as long as it's inside the channel, I expect it will continue going up. If I have a new high, then I would adjust my channel line. And tra la la, tra la la. So if we go to the US 500, what's the story with the US 500 on the four hours? It's sort of a range here, yeah? So remember, in a range, we don't use the channels because how are you going to draw the channel? From the top to the bottom? From the bottom to the top? You don't know where to draw it, right? So in a range, we don't use channels. But when the market was moving up here, I would take it from the low all the way to the high, and I would wait for the market to move inside this channel. When I have one, two closes outside the line, it's a warning signal that this uptrend is not as good anymore, yes? And then you see the market is ranging, so it's a good thing that you got out. Yeah, well, the channel breakouts are a good tool to exit the market. I prefer to enter the market differently Okay, but you could use them as well if you wanted, as long as you know how. All right, very good. So, so let's, the question is how to adjust the channel when there is a new high. So let's say I draw my channel from here to here, right? Okay, so this is my high. I have an upward moving channel. I expect the prices to go in. Oh, look at this. They break the top here. So in that case, I would adjust my channel by redrawing it again from here to here. And as the price makes new highs, I would follow the price. Of course, unless you see a red candle, you don't have to do this all the time, right? And as I move up, I am moving to the new candle and I'm waiting. And here we have the breaking of the channel line and a very aggressive sell-off in the market. And now the market is ranging and you need to wait and see what's gonna happen.
know whether the market is fast or slow does not have anything to do with how you draw the channel. Well, if it breaks the channel and it goes back again, well, okay, so it happens. It can happen, it will happen. Since as we agreed, nothing is 100%, yes? But I mean, picture this, if you bought down here and it's giving you an exit signal, take it, go, and then you wait for the next opportunity to enter the market. All right, excellent. So thank you very much for joining today. Uh, before we go, we have a dollar cut hourly. So let's go and see the dollar cut, USD cut on the hourly time frame. So you see, this was a previous channel we drew. It break the channel, it went up, right? Now, uh, currently, what do we have now? So if you have a channel, the last channel would be drawn from here to here, yes? So, but it's a very small move to draw a channel, but even if you did, it broke the channel, now you don't care what the market is doing. So I don't understand, Kevin, the question about the the dollar, sorry, I was on the daily, my bad. Let me come to the hourly, okay? So if I was to come to the hourly, I would draw it from the low to the high. But you see, I have one close outside. Uh, this one is uh, in or out, whatever. And then it went back inside. So in reality, if you use the two filter two-day rule, you wouldn't have exited this one. All right, so thank you very much again for joining today. I'll see you tomorrow where we will talk about trend reversals, which will help you see how you can enter into the market and become faster than an uptrend or a downtrend. So thank you very much for joining today. And I'll talk to you tomorrow at the same time. Have a good trading.